Hi, I'm Kaushik Mishra, chef de cuisine at Prego at the Western Hyderabad Mind Space. This month we have a pasta promotion at the Prego and I'm here to bring about a simple recipe for you to try at home. The recipe uh, is called strishi with uh, prosciutto and asparagus in an alfredo sauce which is a cream sauce with flavor with cheese. So there are two parts to this recipe. Uh, during the first part, we will show you how to make the dough, which is with the flour and the semola. I will get back, I will come to you with what is the semola. And the other part is to make the sauce and how we finish the pasta. So here I go about doing uh, the dough first. For the dough, I would need uh, the flour. I would need eggs, which is, I would need flour and I would need semola. The recipe calls for uh, 1 kg of flour, uh, 250 grams of semola and 42 egg, egg yolks. That's what we'd use to make the pasta dough. Now I will start showing you. The recipe calls for 250 grams of flour. I've separated the eggs from the egg yolk from the egg white, so we need only the egg yolks to make a pasta dough. So I, ha I have here about 10 egg yolks, and I have 150 grams of semola flour. Now this is a special flour which is imported from Italy. This is what gives strength to the pasta to make it into various shapes. All good quality pastas have this uh, semola. It's a kind of made with the farro grain it is grounded and then it is used in this recipe okay i will just show you how how we go about this we take the flour into a into a container then i will put the egg yolks i will put the semola in it And I begin to mix it. Also, I will put three grams of salt. And when this recipe is over, I will finish it with olive oil. So I begin to mix. The dough. Now finally I'm bridging into a hard dough of, the, of, the, of a pasta. It has to be really hard. You can feel how hard it is. You must be wondering why I have brought it onto a marble slab. The reason for that is to cool down the dough. And here I add just a dash of olive oil to incorporate this olive oil into the dough. It's the form of olive oil I'm using is an extra virgin olive oil. It's preferable because it gives a more pronounced taste to the pasta. So I just incorporate this olive oil into the dough and try and make it a very firm, very firm and very hard dough so that it's easy to... Now I have the dough ready, I would just roll it to form an equivalent shape and then I would roll it through this pasta machine to give it a flat sheet. If you don't have this machine at home, no worries, you can just roll it with your rolling pin till it's about two inches thick so that you can make the various shapes that is required okay so I, you see me how I will roll this uh, pasta sheet it's kind of very hard so it require a lot of we preferably use a rolling pin that rotates on both ends so this is not there at home but no worries you can use a rolling pin that's there at, at home so I will be using this machine now to show you how the sheets come out. Now you can see that I'm getting a pin, get a nice sheet 
from this machine. You can also do it by hand when you're doing it at home. You can see the sheets is getting thinner. This is what uh, the thinness that I require to make this strishi pasta, which is, in other words, it's like a farfel which is made at home. You can see how the sheet has come. After continuous rolling, also you will see that the sheet should be that thin. Then can my hands can be seen from the back. You can see my hands. So this is what the requirement of the sheet is. So this is how I will roll it next. Now you can see I'm cutting this sheet with a serrated cutter, and this is a ravioli serrated cutter, which is used all over Italy. And this is to give the serrations to the shapes to the pasta which looks which makes it looks nicer so i will just uh, serrate these sheets you can see i have already serrated them now i will use a scale to measure for this trishi now on a scale that, that i measure it's about three inches by five by ten inches is what the measurement of the trishi is you can see i'm using a scale to make this trishi so i'll mark it at three inches here and I will cut these strips of 3 inches each. Then again I take 3 inches by here. Mark it here. Then I cut again. I have these flat strips of uh, 3 inches on the width. Now I will use to cut 10 inches on the length. So I will cut one and then I can use the same to cut the rest. So I will use a serrated cutter because I need the serrations on the side. So I can just measure and cut in. You can see how I'm doing it. This is a small piece which I'll throw off. Similar to this. Once I have these done, so I get these strips by 3 inches by 10 inches. And to make strishi or farfel, which we call it, I will use these strips. Now you can see I need some eggs, some egg yolks just to bind. Okay, so I have some egg yolks here ready. Can you give me a pair of gloves? Here's the egg yolk. I'll just mix it up, mix it up so that I can use it. And these are my strips of pasta. So now the shape goes like this. You need to come to the center of this entire sheet. I need to fold it like this to make a farfel. You can see it's, it's in the shape of a bow tie. And then we just twist it the other way. And then just pinch on the sides. So this is what this three sheet shape is. I will use a little bit of egg yolk to bind this pinching that I've done on the pasta sheet. So this is the strishi that that is that what that's what I'm making today. You can see again, I would pinch it on the sides and then twist it, and then I just pinch it here, and then use some eggs to just bind it. Now these need to be frozen for at least half an hour. So if you have a home at, at home, if you have a deep deep free, uh, deep fridge, you can freeze it. I will just take a container, you can just put flour or cornstarch like this on a plate and I will just put these here, probably make a few more. Yeah. 
and keep them we need to wait for it to kind of harden so that this is how a strishi looks like so I made my pasta now I'll show you how to make the sauce okay the next part of the recipe is the sauce that I'm going to make for the strishi the strishi is made with a alfredo sauce with crispy prosciutto and asparagus now how I'm going to go about doing this is I would require some chopped white onions this is easily available in the market you just take off peel it off and chop it we require some chopped parsley some parmesan cheese grated parmigiano reggiano is the best and that's what we use and uh, some white butter or unsalted butter salt and pepper black pepper crushed we also require a block of prosciutto which is parma ham this is also easily available off the shelf of a good market now what i'm going to do is cut strips of this and dry it into the salamander to make crispy parma ham which is like this it just needs to be put in the oven cut thinly and made into thin slices like this i also have the asparagus which i will just cut into rough bits like i'm going to do now so i just cut them into rough bits like this so that it's of the equivalent sizes of the strishi strishi is that 3 inch by 10 inch so kind of uh, diagonal shapes of uh, the asparagus this much asparagus is enough so we need about uh, 30 grams for this recipe okay i will show you how to go about making the sauce need a pan take some olive oil into this now this is again the extra virgin olive oil that i'm using putting in some white onions here cook them till they are translucent just a little bit i put some just a little bit of water to make sure not to burn the onions Once this is kind of done i will put the cream the cream is what we have forgotten to tell you the cream is about 100 ml of cream is required for this recipe so i will just put the cream here i have a water which is kind of boiling here so i'll just put the asparagus just to kind of take off the rawness in it yet it needs to be crunchy so just take off the rawness of the asparagus the sauce is almost done it's so simple it's just white onions olive oil and cream so it's almost done you can see the oil that is floating on top that will incorporate on its own so just a warm with the cream cooking it's not it's not about warming it or boiling the cream it's just you need to warm the cream that's it so this is the sauce is almost done i will just put in the blanched asparagus into this sauce this gives a nice flavor fresh flavor of asparagus cooked with cream and it's a classic combination of making the asparagus with the cream just a hint of butter would would suffice into the sauce now cook it on a very very slow fire just to make sure the cream is not not bubbling too much so this is what i get out of the sauce that i made now i'll come to the last part of the recipe the last part of the recipe calls for the blanching of the pasta so i need a container with hot water in it now with fresh pasta and uh, and uh, packeted pasta i have a lot of packeted pasta around you can see this is a packeted pasta which is uh, di cecco and the one which i made is a fresh pasta this these don't do not have eggs the pasta which i made i've shown you that it has eggs so the cooking time for making fresh pasta is about 3 to 4 minutes it doesn't take much time on cooking the pasta so i and these pastas will take a little bit more time because more they are harder and they are drier in in nature so as soon as my water gets bubbling i will put the pasta the water as you can see is bubbling and in this bubbling water i will put the frozen strishi that i had already got ready so now the key to this uh, boiling water is to add a lot of salt to make sure the pasta is salted enough so i will add about there's no estimation the salt should just be 
pretty salty in the mouth, so I'll just taste. Yeah, it feels like salty in the mouth. So this is the water that is used to blanch the pasta. As I told you, the fresh pasta will just take about three to four minutes to blanch. So I will just put in this trishi inside the water. We will allow this to come to come up. If you can see that this is this is a boiling nature and as and when the pasta comes up means it's almost done. I will just uh, the sauce I made with asparagus. Now I just finish the sauce with this pasta. Let the sauce just warm up. Cream sauces do not need to be boiling, it just needs to be a little bit warm so that I can just I can see a few minute bubbles. The key to making it is to have the sauce hot and the pasta ready. You can see it is just warming up. I don't need to boil it too much. And I will just add a last minute. Throw in some chopped parsley here into a pan, and I will also use a touch of crushed pepper, a touch of salt, please. Just a hint of butter to finish. You cook up a nice plate to cook my dish. Here you can see my. So the plate is fishy very nicely onto this lovely plate that I have. Yeah, look at that. It looks like a bow tie, which is just got some hint of parsley in it. It's got that smell of beautiful asparagus. You must be wondering, I did not put the parmesan cheese. The recipe calls for a little bit of cheese, so I would like to just put the cheese on the top. I don't prefer too much of cheese in the pasta, it doesn't make the pasta suitable enough to eat. I'll finish with a little bit of grated parmesan on top. This is the parmesan reggiano that I'm using. Just clean and wipe up the plates. You probably use the crisp prosciutto that I have. I would use it into making this dish as yeah, a garnish. So the prosciutto inside the sauce may not be very suitable, but this way, nice and crisp, I like it like this. So you just put a dash of olive oil, and here it goes: the strishi with asparagus and prosciutto. Here goes the strishi with asparagus and prosciutto. Here goes the sushi with asparagus and prosciutto ready to eat.